In Creole parametric fillets are known as rounds and they have a number of different purposes including removing sharp edges, reducing stress concentrations, removing non-structural mass, and also making a part manufacturable. Be aware that a round feature can either add or remove material. For example, let me click on the round command. And if I select this edge over here, and right now it has a really big value, let's double click on that to make it smaller. In this case, it's going to end up removing material, but if I select the corresponding inside edge, this one is going to end up adding material. So again, for your convex edges, it's going to end up removing material. For your concave edges, it's going to end up adding material. I'm going to cancel out of here to show you how you can select your different references for the round. And you can start off by selecting different edges in your model. So for example, if I select this edge over here, in the mini toolbar, we can cl click on the round command. You can see from the pop-up menu that R is the keyboard shortcut for creating a round. And if you want to select multiple edges to be driven by that same dimensional value, you're going to hold down the control key. If I hold down control and pick this edge, now both of those edges are part of the same set and a set has the same radius value. Let me hold down the control key and grab that other edge over here and then control one more time and select this particular edge. And that way, all four edges are going to be driven by the same radius. If I change this radius, then all of them are going to update. If you don't hold down the control key, then you're going to end up creating another set. So for example, if I select this edge over here, we now have this edge in set two. If I hold down the control key, I'm add adding more edges to the second set. And hold down the control and pick that one over there. And I can change this to be driven by a different radius value than the first set. So again, set one has a radius of 0.5, set two has a radius of 0.75. And here we can see the different edges. If you click on the details button, it will bring up a dialog box that can help you construct different chains of references. In addition to selecting the references manually, if you go to rule base, you can select tangent chains, partial loops, or complete loops around different surfaces. I'm going to cancel out of here. If you want to complete the round feature, you can hit the check mark. And there we have it located in the model. So in this way, I selected a bunch of different edges, but there are other ways in which you can select your different references. The next method that we'll take a look at, which I use a lot, is called intent references or intent edges. And that's picking the edges associated with a feature. And I highly recommend this method because it is one of the most stable ways of selecting references. If I go to the round feature, I put my mouse over this vertical edge. If I tap the right mouse button, it's now highlighting the intent edges. In other words, the vertical edges associated with that particular feature. So if the shape of the feature ever changes, then this is going to update automatically. And let me change that to a value of one. If I go to the sets tab, you can see that the references listed in here are the intent edges associated with this particular protrusion. If you have trouble clicking the right mouse button in order to get that, you can position your mouse over the edge, hold down the right mouse button, and then choose pick from list. And in the pick from list dialog box, you can get to the different various intent edges. And then you get the one that you want, click OK, and then hit the check mark, and you have your particular round created. Besides selecting edges and intent edges, you can also create a round that goes from a surface to an edge. For example, let's create a round and I will pick this surface and then hold down the control key and select that edge. And there you can see how it is going from the surface and it'll be tangent to the surface and then through the edge. And we can change this value over here. Let me try 0.625. There, that also works for this one as well. And one thing that you can notice with this particular example is that by default, 
the round feature will be propagated to all tangent references. So in other words, I selected this edge, it went around to all the other different tangent edges, and I selected this surface, goes around to all the other different tangent surfaces in this particular case. So again, it automatically gets propagated to tangent references. In a later video, we'll take a look at defining transitions and going into transitions mode. If you wanted to prevent it from going to tangent references, you could add in different kinds of transitions like stop uh, transitions. We'll also take a look at pieces for selecting which pieces will or won't be included in the round feature. But let me go back to the sets mode over here and click on sets. I could create more sets inside of this feature or I can just hit the check mark. And creating multiple sets inside of the same round feature is a great way of organizing your model tree and keeping similar features together with one another. For the next kind of references I'm going to create, I'm going to start off and I'm going to create another round on the inside edges here. Let me create the round, and again, I'm going to tap the right mouse button to get to the intent references, and let's bring this down a little bit to 0.5, and then hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And I want to show you that I can also create a round by selecting two surfaces. If I click on the round feature, I can pick this surface, hold down the control key and select this other surface, and it's creating a round between those two surfaces. And again, surface to surface tend to be more stable than selecting individual edges. So this is another method that you could use just to make sure that you are reducing the chances of having a potential regeneration failure in the model. For selecting your different references, you can also end up creating a full round. And a full round will end up removing a surface from the model. So for example, let's say based on how we want to manufacture this part, that there should be a full round uh, removing this top surface. Let's create the round feature. And there are two different ways that you could do this. You could start off by selecting two edges, and I'm going to select these two parallel edges. And then if you hold down the right mouse button in the pop-up, menu you can choose full round you can also go to the sets tab and there is a button that you can select for a full round and again this will end up removing that top surface from the model because of the radius value that we have we get a little interesting geometry at the corners I'm going to delete that round feature to show you the other method of creating it I'm going to start off the round tool again and I'm going to select this surface and hold down the control key and select this other surface over here. You'll notice that the sets tab is in red because when you select two surfaces, it needs to know which surface you want to remove from the model and that's called the driving surface. Let's pick this surface over here and the key thing about a full round is that you don't get a radius value. The geometry is going to end up determining how big the round is going to be. For our other rounds, let me get rid of a few of these different ones in here because I want to show you other ways in which you can drive your radius of the round. And ends up making that one look ugly. Let's get rid of that and get rid of this one as well. So let's say I want to create a radius on this particular edge. As I mentioned earlier, you can select the edge and then from the mini toolbar, you could choose to create the round. And then for driving the radius, if you hold down the right mouse button in the pop-up menu, one of the options that you have is to have it go through a curve. And I can select this particular curve in the model and that is driving the size of the radius. Again, if I go to the sets tab, we're not going to have a radius value in here. And be aware that when you're using a curve to drive the size of the radius, if I try to hold down the control key and select other edges, it's not letting me do that. But let's take a look at another example. Let's First, I'll just create it so you can see what it looks like and then immediately delete it. You'll notice that we also have a datum point in the model. And you could use a datum point for driving the radius of the round as well. 
let's click on the round tool and this time I'm going to tap the right mouse button to get the intent references if I go to the sets tab here by default it's giving us a value to uh, drive the size of the radius but you can click on this drop down list and choose reference and then pick say a point instead and that way that point is driving the radius for all of the rounds that are selected in those intent edges hit the check mark and there we go and one last thing to take a look at in this video I'm going to go to a different part so here I have essentially a couple of cylinders intersecting each other and a shell feature to hollow them out. Let's say I want to get some rounds on these edges where they intersect. Let's click the round tool. I'm going to select this edge over here. and Let's make it a nice big value that you can see. I'm going to drive that up to a value of 2. And you can see based on how the geometry intersects with each other, the radius is a lot bigger over here and then next down as it traverses around the tangent references. It, there is a, an option called chordal, which will give you a constant chordal length or constant width round. And take a look what happens when I click on this button. You'll notice that the shape adjusts and also change the value over here, but we're getting that constant width of the round as it's being created. Let's double click that. I'm going to change this back to a value of 2. And maybe I also want to select the inside edges. Let's select this edge as well. And the edge on the outside. And that way we have all these edges being selected in the same set within this feature. And I can hit the middle mouse button. And in that way we have our round created. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.